How's it going everyone? Lionheart plays here and today we are here in Lonely Hermit's channel. Uh, we're going to be bringing you the preseason interview of the Elite Battle League Season 5. First and foremost, my friend, how are you doing today? Uh, pretty good. My team lost in football, pretty good. but you know, you know, we move on. It's fine. I think you'll be okay. I'll, I'll live. <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, well, aside from the football stuff, to any of the people who may have found you through the EBL, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us, uh, give us a little bit of an intro for you. Uh, I, I asked how you were doing, good sir. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I did not hear that. You, to be honest, you're breaking in and out, but <clears throat> oh, I'm doing okay. Shit. Thank you for asking. <laughs> um, oh, give me an intro. Um... My name is Lonely Hermit, Josh, or Lonely Hermit. Um, I primarily do Pokemon content on this channel. Right now, we have uh, primarily Nuzlocke content, um, in, at least in video format. When we stream, I usually kind of do Shiny Hunting. I've been trying to figure out what I want to stream, so uh, just keep an eye out for that. But for the most part, we do Pokemon content on the channel. I'm hoping to do more variety stuff in streams. So if you guys like any of that, then um, by all means, stick around, check me out. And uh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. <laughs> all right. So let's go ahead and jump right into the uh, interview here. First, I want to ask you, what is going through your head as we continue to get closer and closer to season five? Oh, man. Um... Oh man, <laughs> I, no, I don't know. I really haven't like I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. It really hasn't been on my mind. I mean, I've, I've you know figured out what I want to do with my Pokemon. I've sort of looked at my opponent, you know, and started to kind of you know break his team down for week one. But uh, it really hasn't been in the back of my mind at all. Like when I think about it, you know, when I actually do stuff with it, obviously it's on my mind. But other than that, I mean, it's not really on my mind. I, I kind of consider it a good thing. Um, because I'm not stressing about it, I'm not worrying about it, I'm just kind of taking it slow uh, and slowly preparing as, as obviously we get closer to the season. So, I mean, I'd say I'm, I'm pretty calm right now, <laughs> for now, at least. Um, I'm sure the week leading into my battle will be stressful. Um, but for now, I'm, I'm pretty calm. I, I haven't really given it too much extra thought than what I need to. Um, I just try to keep myself cool, calm, collected. Um, yeah, calm. <laughs> Oh, I like it. Mm -hmm. I like it. All right, my dude. So you are, I think we can consider you a veteran. You, Your inaugural season was season two. You had a really great season four. Um, are you feeling more or less confident heading into this season compared to your first? Uh, more. <laughs> more. Um, definitely more. Um, that's a short now, answer. Let me, let, let, me ask you, let me ask you a little bit of an off-topic question, a little bit of a twist. What about comparing your confidence are you more confident going into this season now than last season yes um weirdly enough i don't know if i said this in my preseason interview and i probably lied in that interview i was way more nervous going into last season than i was in my, my first season um i don't know what it was there's was, there's was this weird thing where i i kind of felt more pressure almost um okay because I honestly think, like, when you go into your first season, and here's a tip for any newbies watching that are in EBL, just play with confidence. There's no expectations for you. So just go in there, play your game, and do what you got to do. So when it came to my first season, that's kind of how I ran it. I didn't really stress about it too much, but then there's sort of a reputation I had heading into the last season. So I felt like I had to, you know, step up my game and take it to another level, which I kind of did. I think there are definitely things I can do better still. Um... But I, I would say more confident now for sure because of who I beat and how I beat them. Um, I think that definitely adds to the amount of confidence I carry. I think I'm really getting used to this format and how to use teams that to some people who might do competitive, you know, it might they might not understand why a certain Pokemon would be on a team. But to me, it just makes sense because we're in the EBL. We're not doing, you know, doubles and items and all this stuff. So we're doing singles, no items. So it just it's just weird because now things I think mentally I'm way more confident because things are just clicking so much easier. You know what I mean? Like things are just clicking in my head where I'm like, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, so I'd say I'd say 110 percent way more confident than last season. And again, I'm way more calmer this time around as well. Good. Good. <clears throat> now, 
how are how are your preparations going so far for uh, you know for you preparing for for season five? Uh, like I said, I, I'm taking it relatively slow. I mean, we had obviously a long break. Uh, we had a couple months before the draft, and then we still had a couple months after the draft. So I decided to take it slow, kind of go step by step, not really try to stress too much and try to cram it all in one week or however long before my battle. I'm trying to do more to make sure I, I don't have to, you know, cram a bunch of stuff in such a short amount of time. Um... And then obviously at the same time, I mean, we just did it tonight, a uh, little meta breaking the fourth wall moment. Uh, we helped Carlos. So we're trying to help Carlos get ready for this season as well. So I kind of want to put more energy into that. Uh, not that I don't care about my own team. And of course, I'm going to try to win. But I also do want to make sure Carlos is able to succeed Mr. Toes, for those of you who might not know. Um, so my own preparations are, you know, slowly but surely coming along. I, I can't say I'm, I'm behind. I don't think I'm particularly ahead either. I think I'm just, you know, right on track. Um, okay. But more of my focus right now is honestly Carlos making sure he, he gets up to speed. Of course. Completely understandable. Completely understandable. But <clears throat> um, I guess I, I do want to ask, uh, has anything changed uh, from the way that you prepared in, in previous seasons? Has anything has, has there been a change in how you prepare? Much slower. <laughs> Much slower. I don't know if it's the breaks that we take in between seasons, you know, because of the, the amount of time that, it, that there is. Um, much slower. I mean, I've taken sort of a backseat on, on doing, a, you know, intense prep, um, at least preseason. You know, obviously during the season, I'll do more intense prep. But preseason, I've decided to kind of take a step back, um, focus a little more on the content side for the Elite Battling and for my own channel. Um, and then obviously, you know, the two of us have been in talks with the commissioner page, you know, talking about things that are just happening with the elite battle league. Um, mm -hmm. so I kind of put it on the back seat a little bit, but it honestly has worked out for the better because I'm not, you know, constantly thinking about it and worrying about it. You know, at least my team, the whole league is a different story, but for my team personally, um, I haven't really been putting too much, um, stress on it so I, i'd say it's again it's just it's just a lot more calm <laughs> i think that's all i can really say when it comes to my prep it's just so much more calm this time around where i'm I, when i think about my team i'm not stressing you know i'm like okay i, I can do this like i can handle it so it, i mean that's it, it's the same answer over and over but it's honestly the only answer i can really give it's just a lot more calm and slowed down than it used to be it feels good though man. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and take a look at the team that you drafted. All right. Now, I've said this before. I'll say it again. You drafted a freaking powerhouse in your of your team. Okay. We have the Ultra Beast Nagan uh, Naganadel. All right. Then we have the Super Doggo Zacian. We have Lapras. We have Rotom Heat. Then we have Scizor. Uh, Leafeon, Porygon Z, Runarigus, who's a great mom, <clears throat> and Mimikyu. All right. Mm -hmm. So, looking at your team, how do you think your draft went? Uh, so if we're going off of my original game plan, which I'm trying to find in my notebook right now, um, it got derailed pretty bad. Um, okay. It originally i mean my team did not look like that really kind of at all at least the core um i had the other doggo i had inteleon i had tang growth i had hippowdon um there was even a team i had zero aura on it i had i had a lot of different pokemon um i will say the only one the only one that i actually was upset missing out on but it's okay i can move on i guess um was Corviknight. That was really the only one that I was upset that I missed out on. I had Cinderace on my list, but honestly I didn't even really expect to get it. It was just there. If it was available, I missed it by one pick. <laughs> but if it was available, I would have taken it. It really wasn't a big deal. Again, I you know I wasn't really expecting to get it in the first place. But um my team definitely got derailed quite a bit. I mean I wasn't gonna originally take Zashin. I was not gonna take Lapras. I was not gonna take Scizor. I wasn't going to take Renrigus. I wasn't going to take Mimikyu. None of those Pokemon were on my original list. Um, but I, I think I was able to recover quickly. Also, with your help, I'll give you some credit there. You helped me just kind of, you know, bring my options down um, and help me decide a lot better. 
um getting that second opinion really helped um <laughs> uh, <laughs> but i do think i was able to recover from the losses <laughs> that i took uh the, the the picks that got sniped and i was able to still put together it really i mean i i think i have a really solid team um so I think I was able to recover really well, even though I got sniped quite a bit, even though my original team uh, was very different. And honestly, I'm happy that I did because I think this team was better than the other original team I had. Um, so I, it, I guess on paper, it, my draft went terribly, <laughs> but ultimately it honestly went really, really well and I ended up with a better team. Yeah, and I was going to ask you, because you had mentioned that your team was derailed, that, you know, that your plans were derailed, and I was going to ask, was it due to the snipings and everything? Um, <clears throat> but I'm glad that you were able to, to, to recover uh, and whatnot. Um, there was something here that I was going to say, and it completely, it completely slipped my mind. <laughs> so we're just going to go ahead and move on, because, but <laughs> it completely slipped my mind. But aside from getting oh that's what it was so check this out remember how season three i got sniped yes. a lot and we won and we would have i've had a perfect championship maybe this could be that for you maybe you got sniped for a reason maybe, maybe you might have a perfect season this season maybe we'll see <laughs> so i guess uh with that <laughs> with that out of the way there um, I guess we kind of answered this question. Um, I'm still going to go ahead and ask for it so you can go into more detail if you'd like, if you have anything more to add. But how are you feeling with the team that you were able to draft? I mean, I, I mean, I guess I kind of said it. I'm really happy, honestly. Like, I did. So after we drafted, here's a little short story. Uh, after we drafted, I honestly took a month from the EBL, more or less. Um, the only things I focused on was when, you know, you pitch and I would have meetings. That's about it. Um, I didn't really focus on my team all that much. It wasn't really a month. It was more like two, three weeks, something like that. Um, but then when I, you know, cause it, I don't know if you've ever done this, like when you're, you're working on something and you kind of put it on the back burner and you come back to it later and you try to see like, okay, do, do I still like this? Um, I do that a lot when I make stuff in Photoshop and things like that. Um, and I will say, I put my team to the side. I came back to it a couple weeks later, and I still really, I mean, I liked it more <laughs> when I came back to it. And I, as much as, again, as much as I was upset with not getting Corvin, I was like, I'm, it, it still worked out incredibly well. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy with my team. I'm really happy with my team. I think I have a lot of balance um, between offense and defense. I think I have a lot of balance with, you know, support and utility in there as well. Um, not to give anything away, but I, 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 I really do think I have a, a solid team, and I'm, I'm very, very happy with the way my draft turned out. For sure. Good. Good. Now, you don't have to go into detail for this next question. Uh, you don't, uh, you know, you don't have to go into detail or anything, or you can just keep it really brief. Um, but are there any Pokemon on your team that you feel might get the MVP throughout the season? Um, I mean, one of my Pokemon's on the logo right now, so I feel like that's kind of my cop-out answer. I'll just say Zashin. I won't go into detail, uh, but uh, I, that's just my cop-out answer. I'll just use that. Okay. Use that okay. It's not, it's not going to be the first time Zashin breaks the game open. You yes. Know that. <laughs> um, now, on the flip side, right? On the flip side, do you mm -hmm. feel that there are any Pokemon on your team that you feel might be underrated? Um, I mean, I really don't think people paid enough attention to Runeregis last season when you had it. Um, it's pretty darn good. And, it's really good. And if you use it correctly, it, it, it can be annoying and, and a threat. I would also say Porygon Z hasn't, hasn't been used in the EBL. Um, I don't even think anyone from the other conference took it, to my knowledge. So I still think Porygon Z would be would be another um, threat that people maybe 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 will have to keep an eye out for that. We'll see how I use it. Um, but I think those two. I don't think people paid enough attention to Rodriguez, and obviously Porygon Z hasn't been drafted. I think people know what Scizor, Rotom Heat, Lapras, Ash, and all of them can do. You know, Mimikyu as well, Naganadel. 
but I mean, I honestly also include Leafy on. I mean, I'll steal that answer from your interview as well. I don't think people take it seriously enough because um, I'm still the only one that's drafted it, even though it's like it's a fantastic grass type. Um, so I, I'd also include that one. But I think those three. Um, one because one hasn't been drafted. The other one has only been drafted by me up until you know you took it. And then I don't think people paid enough attention to Rodriguez. So I, I think those three definitely are are my underrated list. Okay. I like those answers. So, uh, now, to, shifting the focus to you as a coach, I mentioned earlier that I think we can pretty much count you as a veteran. You know, you had your inaugural season with season two, then you had season four, and now you're competing again here. And I always say that, you know, with experience, you get, you know, more and more knowledge and everything. That being said, um, how confident are you in your ability to fully use your team, to fully utilize your team to its max potential, given everything that you've learned so far? Mm -hmm. Well, look, I've been here since the beginning. Well, <laughs> you know, I've been behind the scenes, but I was watching and I, I, I've, you know, participated in people's prep when I wasn't actually, you know, fighting or battling, whatever. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, you know what I mean. I, I, no, 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 I, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, but being able to see the way people prep and learning from other people in that sense and then seeing how, uh, especially in season three, learning from Pidge, because honestly, Pidge is, Pidge is a, maybe the best tactician in the league. Um, his ability to prep and find your weaknesses and really dissect your weaknesses, it's a terrifying thing. Um, I definitely learned a lot from his prep and just sort of that behind the scenes stuff. But from a battling perspective, I do think I still have some ways to go to be able to use Pokemon to their full potential. I wish last season I had the opportunity to show off, you know, Aerodactyl more um, to, with what I wanted to do with it, show off, you know, Drapion more, Magmortar more. I had Pokemon that I really wish I could have, I could have stepped up more with. I just don't think I had the best matchup for them. Um, and I really wish I would have looked more in depth when I drafted them as to, you know, um, whether it'd be a good pick or not for my opponents. Uh, I, I do I do still think I have a ways to go, but at the same time, I think I've gotten better at finding different ways to utilize Pokemon that normally people wouldn't. Um, do I think it's the max? Not necessarily, but I do think I can use Pokemon to a greater potential than maybe anyone else has used these Pokemon before, honestly. Just so you know, the first portion of your answer has offended me greatly. I'm sorry. We're done with this interview. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm, I'm, that's, I like the answer. It's, you know, you 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 feel like you have more room to to grow as, as far as yeah. utilizing Pokemon that you've used and going to use to the... I like that. You know, I like that. The, the, the thing that I've seen with uh, with certain, you know, with, with not just the league, but I guess everywhere is that people have a certain amount of viewers. So it's definitely good to, you know, yeah. to acknowledge where that you, that you still have certain things that you can work. Yeah, I, I, like I, I can't deny it. I mean, I, I, I really, I'm going to keep bringing it up because I really, really, really hate. I said in my postseason interview, Saying it again, I really hate that I couldn't show off Aerodactyl because I had plans for it. I had ways to use it, and I just could not use it in a way that just made sense. So I I really hate that I couldn't use it properly. I, I really I really hate that I couldn't. Um, I just got really bad matchups for it, but I still think I could have found ways to make it work. But um, yeah, that that alone is just proof that I have I have a ways to go here. For sure. I like it. All righty. So now we're going to shift the focus back from you to your team. Do you think your team will be able to stack up? How, or how do you think the team, your team will be able to stack up against the rest of you? Really well. I think I have answers for everyone's top threats. Um, I do think maybe I'm not going to say it a lot. I think to, I do think I lack a couple things. Um, that other teams might have in in terms of counters but um if i work my team correctly i do think i can i can stack up to, to anyone in the league um i think at least on paper i mean i think i have the best one of the not the best team i, I don't mean that one of the best teams <laughs> um 
and I think very much that if I can work my team correctly, I find, you know, I do the same amount of prep I was doing for the first few weeks last season, um, you know, specifically weeks two through four. I did a ton of prep for those weeks. Um, if I do the same amount of prep, I can easily dissect other people's teams and find weaknesses. So I, I think I think my team is more than capable of stacking up against against anyone in, in this league. It doesn't matter who I go against. I think I can put up a good fight. Good. Good. So we're going to shift the focus right back to the league. Uh, and you are in the uh, Dynamax Conference in the Hoenn Division alongside with the Colchester Celtics uh, with Poke Pitch. Um, then we have the Walton Wingles with Nate Tube, and then we have the Florida Rallets with Mike the Quick. What were your thoughts when you first saw who you were with? I'm scared. Um, <laughs> <laughs> mostly because of Pidge. I'm no disrespect to the other two. Um, Pidge has obviously proven himself worthy of, of you know being a top top battle in the league. Um, the other two, I mean, I I don't know what Mike the Quick is about. I don't know if he has any competitive. I know I know nothing about him in terms of competitive his competitive side. Um, and Nate, his track record hasn't been fantastic in the EBL. Not gonna underestimate him by any means, but um, that those two, I don't want to say made me more comfortable necessarily because Pidge is still there, but the two of them made me feel like, okay, I think I have like a decent shot. Um, but I, I, I don't want to make it sound like I'm disrespecting them. I just, I just on paper, realistically, I, I have experience, you know, against the newcomer. I should be able to handle that. And Nate's track record, depending on what he's doing in the off season, who knows? Maybe he's been doing a ton of work. I'm not really sure. Um, but Pidge was the one that made me nervous. <laughs> I was excited to face the other two. I like facing newcomers. I really do. I like seeing what they're about. And I get, I think I get Florida in week five, if I remember correctly. So I'm excited. Um, I get Nate week one, which is I get to see, you know, what sort of improvements he's making. Um, I get to experience that firsthand. Um, but Pidge is the one, man. I, I seem to keep getting really difficult people on my schedule. Um, but I, I'd say more or less excited, but there's definitely nerves in there because I think I proved myself against some of the top battlers in the league last season and even the season before that. Um, well, season two. Um, but I, that doesn't make me any less nervous to face them. It's still going to be a really intense chess, ba chess match. Um so excited with with a, a hefty touch of nerves in there. <laughs> okay. Well, you kind of answered the next two questions. Um, so I'll give you a chance to, you know, go more in depth with it. Uh, the first one, of course, being um, when you saw your schedule. And we'll just go over your schedule really quick here. <clears throat> you mentioned week one, you're facing Walton. Week two, you're facing Pidge, Colchester. And week three, you're facing Iowa. Week four, you're facing Texas. And then week five is place in Florida. All right. Um, now, seeing your schedule and who you're facing, did it make you? I, I believe you mentioned that you were excited uh, and whatnot. Uh, were at, were you, aside from facing pitch, were there any other emotions in there uh, once you saw your schedule? Uh, on paper, it seems like a winnable schedule, right? I have two opponents who I think combined have like one or two regular season wins um obviously i have landon who's serving a handicap and then a newcomer but i really don't think it's going to be as easy as i think on paper or as easy as it might look on paper um because texas has probably their best team they've had ever um walton's team is really interesting um for reasons i will not go in depth in um i don't want to let him know i know what he's about even though he probably knows I know, but <laughs> still. Um, and then I can never take a newcomer um, lightly. I, I won't. Uh, fortunately, fortunately, I do get him in week five. So I'll have four weeks um, to see what he's about, to see what, you know, sort of tactics and the way he plays. I get to have four weeks of footage to, to figure out, you know, how I can play against him, um, fortunately. So really colchester is the highlight on my schedule that makes me very scared but um i'm excited to see what these guys are about again i really hope nate and and alan have been doing a lot of work in the offseason to improve i want to see you know them improve i want to face an improved version of, of them 
um, because to be the best, you got to beat the best. So I'm hoping that they improve. Um, and I'm not taking Landon lightly. Handicap or not, I do not care. His team's too good to take him lightly. So um, I think on paper, my schedule might look easy. I don't think it's going to be that easy. Um, I'm excited, but again, also nervous. Um, but I'm, ex I, I'm more excited, honestly, because I, again, to beat the best, you got to to be the best, you got to beat the best. So I, I'm really hoping that some improvements were made. Um, and I'll be taking on a much improved version of, of more specifically Nate and Allen um, because their track record doesn't serve them well. But I really hope that they've been improving and I really want them to improve because I want to struggle. <laughs> I don't want every match to come easy. I want to struggle so I can learn more. Obviously, I want to win, but I don't mind struggling so I can learn more about my team and really, you know, get through those struggles and, and improve. So, um, I mean, I'm really excited. <laughs> I'm really excited. I'm more excited now that we're talking about it. <laughs> so, you mentioned difficulty and how, uh, you know, pitch makes you scared and whatnot, and you feel like on paper that it seems like a winnable schedule however you don't think that it's going to be as easy so i guess touching base on uh, touching on that difficulty how would you rate your schedule out of 10. i think pidge alone would make me say eight honestly okay. um okay pidge alone would make me say eight everyone else added in let's say like an 8.5 9 we'll say nine, we'll, we'll stick to eight and i'll stick to eight because i really want to believe that you know alan and, and nate are making improvements um again I, I obviously already sung high praise of pidge and what i think well, i'm not gonna go into that match scared though i'm not i'm gonna go in very confident um because that was the key against you and bob last season was just to go in and play my game um so i'm, I'm still gonna go into that match with, confident with you know with poise but it doesn't mean i'm not gonna I mean, obviously i'm gonna take him incredibly seriously um Everyone else, so I, again, I cannot take Landon lightly. I don't care about the handicap, and I hope that Nate and Allen have been improving. Um, and then, you know, Florida, we'll see what they're capable of. But um, I'm going to say Nate because I, I personally think that my schedule on paper might look easy, but I really don't think it will be. I think I will face struggles, uh, and I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> but I think eight, especially because. If Pidge was later in the schedule, maybe it'd be a little more lenient, but because he's so early in my schedule, it's going to be a really big test. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say say 8 out of 10 for my schedule here. Okay. it's a good, healthy little uh, level there. Um, so, little question here for you. Well, they're all questions, but you know what I mean. Um, is there anyone that's not on your schedule that you would like to face? You, because we'll be in the championship. And Carlos. So I can knock him out of yeah. place. Just so you know, <laughs> you're not going to win that championship. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just messing with that. Um, no, but yeah. <laughs> that, that's my legitimate answer. I want to face you again. Um, I, our battle last season, I don't care what anyone says. I thought it was battle of that the, was, of the that season. That was a great frankly. battle. I don't care what anyone says. Uh, at least of the regular season. I think it was the best battle there. Um, it was very intense. Matt said it was one-sided on my side. I really didn't see it, even watching it back. Even when the Stealth Rocks got played, it still felt like I, I it still felt like I might lose. Uh, maybe it's because you know I'm in it, so I'm biased. I don't know, but I think that was definitely the battle of the regular season. Um, and I love I love testing myself against you, especially when we're doing practice battles. Um, I mean, I we've done hundreds of practice battles. I think that's might be an understatement <laughs> we've done a ton of practice battles together and i enjoyed every single time because it's just it's just an incredible chess match um and again it means we'll be in the championship so clearly i'll have improved a lot um so you and then i want to face carlos i i know i joke that i want to you know beat him knock him out of playoffs because i do i'm gonna beat him i'm gonna <laughs> sweep him oh no <laughs> <laughs> no nah, but i really do want to face him <laughs> Hopefully, 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 the playoffs. All right, so we're going to go ahead and shift the, the, the <laughs> attention back to the league as a whole, looking at the teams. Which teams do you think are looking the most dangerous, not including your own? Um, Your team is offensively very, very scary. Um, I think the amount of pressure you can apply is 
just automatically puts you on a whole different level honestly um landon's team without the handicap is very good with the handicap i still think it'll it'll add a lot of pressure and i still think it'll do a lot of work um i just think the handicap really keeps me from saying it's the most dangerous um texas i mean texas if they make improvements by all means i, I would put them up there um i like the matangs team as well um the combination of sand trick room we've kind of seen it before with uh the doorman and the texas tyranitar they tried it in season three um but i know maxis has some competitive experience so we'll see how he adjusts you know I, I think that team could be very dangerous um i think timmy's team i think max's bogus wheel team that was very boring uh <laughs> i have to throw shade every single time um his team can be dangerous but i think in my personal conference um carlos's team with proper training can be very scary uh timmy's team and uh i don't know page has some weaknesses that i i didn't really see last season that can make a big difference but i think i'd, I'd say it, it, with proper practice i mean carlos can be a very very serious threat um but I, I'd probably pick Timmy for my division be, or my conference because he already has that experience. And then for the opposite conference, I think I'd, I, I think I'd still back you because um, you know what you're doing. <laughs> and you got the team to back it up. This is probably your best team. Maybe season three rivals it, but this team is very scary. So I'd say you in the mega conference and then Timmy in the Dynamax conference with the experience. Okay, healthy little choices there. Healthy <laughs> little choices. Now, <clears throat> on the flip side of that, are there any teams that you feel might be uh, underestimated but could perform beyond your expectations? I think a default answer has to be Landon. Um, okay. Because I can see that. I mean, you're you're down to you know two kills right right off the rip. So I think a default answer has to be Landon. However, I think his team is good enough to try and cover that O2 hole. Um, it's just going to be a matter of him rotating Pokemon and make sure he, making sure he brings everyone by the end of the season, obviously. Um, that's kind of the cop-out answer, so I won't say that. But the Mega Conference, I'm going to say the Texas Tyranitar. Um, actually, with with improvements, I'll say the Texas Tyranitar, but I'm actually going to say Jakey. Um, hmm, okay. I think his team has a good amount of offensive threats. I think it's a very... It's, it's kind of flown under the radar i feel like a little bit of how offensive his team can really be um again a couple of questionable picks i can see why he took them um i do think there are better versions of them but regardless i think jakey might be my answer for the mega conference because i think that's a pretty solid team uh we talked about offensive pressure and i think that team's kind of got it to be honest um so i would say jakey for the mega conference and then i would say an interesting one i don't really like the legend picks for the raging lake i'm not gonna lie um so i'd probably skip past that um i'd say neat i'd say neat because his team is is a it's a specific type of team um <laughs> uh it just depends on how he's able to use it but if Nate is able to use his team correctly that team is going to be pretty scary. I'm not going to lie. Um, I've been doing a lot of research into it, so I can speak on on that. So if Nate can use his team properly, I think his team is pre would be pretty scary. Um, and I can say more or less the same for Jakey. If they can use their teams properly, they can do a lot of damage this season. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> now, we're going to shift the focus back on you. How do you think you're going to perform this season? Again, I think I have a winnable schedule. Um, if I really, really want to win, um, I'll put in the same amount of work I put in last season, and it, it, it paid off. You know, it paid off. I, I walked over the three and one record, record, record. Um, record. <laughs> I walked away with the three and one record. Um, my first, my loss was only because I got caught by surprise. Honestly. Um, if I, you know, keep a cool head, keep my poise, 
and um, you know I really think about the different ways I can get cut off guard um, <laughs> and I prep the same way I did for you for Bob for Alan um, I think I can I can definitely get a, a winning record this season I think it's, it's very much within my my reach it just depends on how much I how much time I put in how much effort I put in um, and if I put in the same amount of prep as last season because again um, the regular season weeks two through four went really well and then the week break happened and I kind of just quit <laughs> I did not put it not put in nearly as much prep showdown was making me really more more mad than it really should have that was on me I wasn't even really on showdown I was just making me really mad because I didn't even it was at a point I kind of said this in my last interview, it was kind of at a point where I didn't really care so now I'm getting mad over something I didn't really care about and then I went into that battle really upset um so I, my mind was not straight not to take it away from max i really i sorry i don't want to make it seem like that i don't want to take it away from max um he played a great match but if i can keep my head straight not get too frustrated keep my mind in the game and honestly i, I think i can i can walk away with a winning record here remember an angry mind is a narrow mind yes very much <laughs> now <clears throat> Do you have any specific goals that you do? You, are there any specific goals that you might have for the season, whether they be short term or long term? Um, winning record, win week one finally. <laughs> I still have not won in week one, so that I guess should be a short term goal. Um, beating Pidge would be definitely. It would definitely make my season for sure. Um, I I think very highly of him, as I've already said in this interview. So. Uh, as a person, as as a battle, I mean, on, on, in every way, I think very highly of Pidge. Um, so I think beating him would, would would definitely be a highlight on the season. So I would say win week one, beat Pidge, make the playoffs <laughs> without having to get into the playing game. If I can do that, that would be awesome. If I can get in without having to play that extra match, that'd be awesome. Um, so yeah, I'd say those are my three goals, and then maybe get further in the playoffs. <laughs> Okay. Now, to top everything off, the final question. Why are you going to be the champion of the EBL at the end of this season? Because I'm the best. Um, <laughs> um, I think I'll give pretty much the same answer as I did last season. Like, if I put in the time, I put in the effort, which didn't happen. And that was the thing. You know, I, I didn't towards the end of last season i did not put in the time i did not put in the effort towards the end um and clearly i'm not the champion so <laughs> i think if i put in the time the effort and the same sort of passion i had from weeks two through four last season i really need to get back in that mindset because when i got in that mindset i was i mean clearly i was winning matches um and it's proven that if i really get into that mindset i can win multiple matches in a row like it's not the end of the world um you know, if I get caught in a really bad situation because I can turn it around and my mind will be a lot more clear. Um, so I'll give the same answer I gave him last season. If I put in the time, put in the effort, and give the same sort of passion, I can absolutely beat anyone in this league. No one will stand a chance. <laughs> <clears throat> no one. So No one will stand a chance. <laughs> so now... The brunt of the interview out of the way. We do have one last little thing here. Normally, this is where we allow the competitors to go ahead and start plugging uh, any projects that they may have, socials and all that good stuff. So this is the opportunity for you to go ahead and do so. Take it away. Go ahead and plug whatever you got. Uh, so currently, I believe I'm going to put this out relatively soon-ish. Um, we should still have these series going on, I hope. <laughs> we have our Pokemon Violet Type Lock. Um, should be wrapping up relatively soon, but it's been a blast. Honestly, playing that game is a lot of fun again for the third time. Um, it's been a ton of fun. I love it. I love doing tie blocks, so that just made the game 10 times more enjoyable. Um, and of course, we have our Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon Soul Link with always more videos. Uh, that series has also been a ton of fun. Definitely up and down. It's been a bit of a roller coaster, but honestly, the the run we're on it's the run the run we're on is the run so if you want to see the best run possible on that game just check it out i'm just saying um so those are the two series those are the two series we have going on, on the channel um hopefully we'll have streaming up and up and running by the time this comes out 
um as of recording this this week i'm actually gonna be you know out i'm gonna be on a trip for the whole week so um hopefully by the time this comes out i'll be you know kind of streaming a little bit more at least um so keep an eye out for that uh and also down below of course uh the coaches check them all out please they're all amazing people so please go check them out go subscribe to them and also the elite battle league channel should be down there as well i also do videos over there for those of you who might not know there's an elite battle league channel so check that out i do videos over there uh this guy does videos over there um and it's it's great so please check that out as well and again check out all the other coaches go subscribe to them Alrighty, and there it is, everyone. That has been the preseason interview of the coach of the LA Inferno, Lonely Hermit, aka Josh. Uh, of course, make sure you show some love uh, to him and show you know bring, show some love, bring it along his way, along to the rest of the coaches that are going to be playing in the league. Um, <clears throat> now, really quick, of course, are there any final words out there for your fans? Uh, stick with me if there are downs this season because there might be. Uh, <laughs> you know, week one we got swept, and then I went on to win three straight matches against some fantastic opponents. So, um, definitely stick with me. I, I promise I will put in more effort, even if I'm not feeling it, even if I may not be there mentally. I will still try to put in more effort this season to make sure we can make a deep run. So, keep an eye out. I don't know, we might be able to do some work this season. I think you could. I think you could. But that has been everything, um, every, everybody. My friend, I wish you the very best of luck in this coming season. We will see you all very soon for the start of the EBL Season 5. That is going to be February 25th, February 2-5, 2023. Go ahead. Be there. Um, that is it for me, guys. Take care.